Namaskar and welcome back to the video course on watershed management. In module number 6, lecture number 23, today we will discuss remote sensing and applications in watershed management. So, some of the important topics what will be covered in today's lecture include remote sensing basics, features of remote sensing, remote sensing process and advantages, important satellites, image processing, applications of remote sensing in surface water and ground water, applications of remote sensing in watershed management. Some of the keywords for today's lecture include remote sensing, features, image processing, electromagnetic spectrum and satellites. So, as I already mentioned earlier, when we deal with the watershed management or watershed management plans, we will be dealing with a large area just like a watershed, river basin or a catchment. So, it is a very huge area. So, where we have to get so much of data like uh, the topographic data, land use data, land cover data, soil data. So, like that so much of data are needed to develop appropriate management plans or to develop models to study the uh, various behavior of the system just like uh, related to water resource management or land management or the development of various rainwater harvesting structures like that. So, since we need a huge amount of data, so if we go to field and collect data there is limitation since we cannot get the entire data in an appropriate way which requires for a modeling or which requires to develop appropriate management plans. So, that way as we discussed earlier the remote sensing helps in a big way for hydrologic related modeling or water shed related planning and management. So, in this context in today's lecture we will discuss some of the basic aspects of remote sensing. Remote sensing is a big area where so, so much details we have to discuss, but today's lecture we will be discussing only the important perspectives which are related to watershed management and some of the basics and applications related to watershed management. So, let us now look into the some basic aspects of remote sensing. So, remote sensing uh, as already discussed earlier, remote sensing is an art and science of obtaining information about earth features from measurements made at a distance. So, here as the definition shows, we are not directly going and getting the data or we are not coming to contact with the various the data which we are directly collecting, but we are getting the data remotely say from a distance say that it can be just like an aircraft flying over the area or a satellite passing over the area. So, at a remote distance uh, say through various means we are getting the data required. So, th that art and science is called a remote sensing. So, that where remote sensing is a science of making inferences about objects from measurements made at a distance without coming into physical contact with the objects under study. So, when a satellite is passing over an area a watershed or a river basin, then it is sending certain signals or it is collecting certain data based upon its movement and various other parameters. So, that data we are processing and utilizing. So, that way uh, the there is no direct contact with the objects, but we are getting the red data remotely. So, generally remote sensing means sensing of the earth's surface from space by making use of the properties of say electromagnetic wave emitted, reflected or diffracted by the sensed objects for the purpose of improving natural resource management, land use and protection of the environment. So, this is a general definition in, a, in modern times with respect to remote sensing. So, earlier there used to be a number of ways we used to get this data remotely either using some balloons or we use aircraft. So, nowadays we are using mainly satellites, remote sensing satellites. So, in this say uh, we are getting the, the data in such a way that the electromagnetic waves emitted, reflected or diffracted by the sensed objects, we get back this data and then we process this data and then we use it in an appropriate form. So, that is the modern uh, day remote sensing, but earlier times we used to get data through say through using flying over the by the, by using the aircraft or 
by using balloons or other kinds of mechanism. So, that way remote sensing now plays a major role in most of the watershed development management plans since we can get to so much of data since one scene gives may be entire spectrum of the watershed which we consider and then uh, once we process those data we can uh, get on our computer the details like land use, land cover, soil map or the uh, slope map. So, all this after processing in a uh, remote sensing uh, package or the GIS package, we can make it an appropriate format. So, that way the modern remote sensing using satellites, we are using the electromagnetic spectrum. So, that means say you can see that uh, the various spectrums of electromagnetic spectrum are listed here. So, here we use the uh, bands that refers to spectral channels in the electromagnetic spectrum. So, here we can see that as per the wavelength in micrometer, there are various electromagnetic spectrum bands. So, like cosmic rays, X rays, then gamma rays, uh, ultraviolet, visible near eye, uh, infrared, uh, mid infrared, thermal infrared, microwave. Uh, so, then the uh, wavelength used for television and radio. So, actually for remote sensing purpose, we use this range starting from ultraviolet to uh, sometimes to microwave. So, here I have listed various bands. So, the band means here bands refers to spectral channels in the electromagnetic spectrum. So, bands 1 to 7. So, my wavelength are given in a micrometer. Uh, so, starting from 0 0.5 to say uh, 1 meter. So, the nominal spectrum location uh, say, say for example, within the wavelength of 0.45 to 0.52 it is uh, blue and then 0 0.5 to 0 0.62 to green. So, like that. So, correspondingly the principal applications are also listed say for example, in this range point for band 1 0.45 to 0 0.52 we can use for coastal water mapping, soil or vegetation then 0 0.5 to 0 0.62 which is the nominal spectral location in the green uh, range. So, we can use for vegetation discrimination then 0 0.62, 0 0.69 in the range of red uh, bands. So, we can use for chlorophyll absorption region then 0 0.76 to 0 0.9 near infrared to uh, identify or to get the, uh, appli uh, the application in the field of vegetation, water body, soil moisture etcetera. So, like that here uh, various for various applications what kinds of bands which we are using are listed here. So, principally the bands start so for remote sensing generally it is come starting from this uh, ultraviolet or this range to uh, going up to microwave. So, that is the uh, main uh, region of the or the band of the electromagnetic spectrum uh, where we generally use for uh, remote sensing. Say for example, 1 centimeter, 1 meter or 7th band it is in the microwave. So, there uh, we, we can use it for soil moisture. So, some of the advanced uh, say uh, remote sensing satellites uh, use this band and that can be used for even for soil moisture study. So, that way uh, we use particular bands for particular applications. So, depending upon where we are using the remote sensing satellites for whether land use land cover or soil moisture or ocean application or coast region applications. So, like that accordingly we can choose a specific bands of the electromagnetic spectrum or specific satellites are uh, put for that particular band. So, like a cartosat or the, the, the microwave uh, region. So, like that. So, that way uh, we can choose particular uh, satellite remote sensing satellite in particular bands. Uh, for the uh, specified applications which we are trying to do uh, for that particular application. So, now within this background let us look into what are the important features as far as remote sensing is concerned. So, here in this slides, so the various features are listed here. So, we can see that uh, since say here in this figure which is uh, taken from Marwan and Kotmani 2004 uh, modified. So, here this is the satellite or this is the aircraft which is flying over or this is a satellite moving over the surface. So, you can see that this is the way the, the scanning or the, the reception or the uh, 
of the particular electromagnetic spectrum uh, band is uh, which is uh, the re receiver obtained. This remote sensing that way you can see that it provides a regional view. So, if this is the watershed, so that entire region within one passage of the, of the satellite uh, we are obtaining. And then another important aspect is it provides repetitive looks at the same area. So, once the satellite is passing over this and again say after few days say or one week or two weeks like that, then again the same area to the satellite may be passing. So, that way we get uh, the data again in a repetitive manner. And then the remote sensors see over a broader portion of the spectrum than the human eye. So, that is advantage. So, when we are in an aircraft we can see larger area or if you say the satellite which is further above the aircraft uh, say this range. So, it will be getting much broader uh, portion of the so, uh, area which is uh, uh, it is taking and that way may be a watershed or a river basin scale we can easily get the data required for the uh, say various hydrological modeling or development of watershed management plans it is possible. The sensors can focus in on a specific bandwidth in an image as I already mentioned in the previous slides. So, they can also look at a number of bandwidths simultaneously. So, some of the satellites it can look into the area at a number of bandwidths simultaneously. So, that is the advantage. So, nowadays the modern uh, satellites. So, the remote sensors often record signals electro electronically and provide geo referenced digital data. So, uh, say the data which is uh, say either through uh, diffraction or reflection or whatever way it is getting back to the satellite. So, the data is obtained geo reference so that we can easily identify what is the location and this data will be digital and then that data we can process and then we can develop appropriate maps or appropriate um, uh, data requires for hydrologic modeling or the uh, development plans. Some of the other advantages like remote sensors nowadays they with the modern techniques uh, we can have remote sensing uh, or remote sensors operate in all seasons at night and in all even bad weather. So, that way like microwave or the, the advanced types of satellites remote sensing satellites can give the data all time uh, at night or in any bad weather like a heavy rainfall or cyclonic or whatever the weather conditions. And so, in all these uh, this uh, data can be obtained. So, that way this remote sensing technology has um, developed in the last few years and uh, we can see that uh, now very sophisticated data high resolution data even up to 1 meter resolution or even some some of the satellites from uh, USA or Russia it can even go uh, say uh, uh, higher res resolution further to 1 meter say like a 0.5 meter level uh, things are available uh, nowadays depending upon say whether the usage depending upon whether it is uh, climate or or uh, the army or navy or whichever the 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 agencies are using so accordingly various remote sensing uh, satellites are uh, available uh, say uh, by various uh, agencies like nasa or indian space research organization so now since we are not going to cover in all the aspects of remote sensing it is not possible i am planning to give only one lecture uh, dedicated to this remote sensing application uh, as far as watershed management is concerned. So, that way uh, we will be only going some, some of the important aspects uh, which is relevant to the uh, uh, applications related to watershed management. So, now uh, we have seen the basics. So, now let us see uh, how the remote sensing is done and what are the uh, important processes taking place. So, these details are uh, given in these slides. So, the remote sensing process. So, actually uh, to get the remote sensing data there should be an energy source which is either reflected or diffracted uh, like that as I mentioned in the previous slide. And then this energy interaction with the atmosphere takes place and then uh, this after the interaction the satellite is uh, getting back. So, recording of energy by sensor and then that data to be transmitted to the to the, uh, the stations on the earth and then that data to be processed. So, that way remote sensing process uh, is a quite complicated process. So, first the satellite should be there, remote sensing satellite should be there 
and then uh, that satellite is collecting the the, the say sending either sending certain signals or say say for example with respect to um, uh, the the heat uh, from the solar uh, say solar heat uh, which is reflected or that way also some satellites are there or infrared region whatever it is so this energy source so for, first of all the remote sensing satellite passing over particular area and then the energy source and then energy interaction with the atmosphere and then uh, once that uh, satellite has to get back this uh, uh, the the data and then that data is to be transmitted to the uh, station and then that data to be uh, processed for further utilization. So, that way remote sensing process is a complicated process number of steps are there and uh, then uh, there are specified senders uh, remote sensing senders say for example, uh, uh, say um, uh, in India it is national remote sensing uh, space center NRSC located at Hyderabad. Uh, so, th that way uh, we say as far as watershed management plans are concerned, we are looking directly the data from the agency concerns for the specified date or for specified uh, location by providing the latitude longitude for that particular location. So, that way only uh, we get we request the data to the, the NRSC or specified agencies and we collect the data and then that data we have to uh, process uh, in, a, in say specified um, uh, so softwares like uh, uh, say RDAS or other kinds of specified softwares. Uh, so, that process is called the image processing. Uh, so, uh, image processing and analysis. So, specific soft softwares are nowadays available. So, here what we are doing is uh, we are uh, doing the image uh, restoration and correction uh, then uh, uh, we uh, enhance the image. So, that is called Im image enhancement then uh, image transformation and then uh, we do image classification. So, uh, this image classification can be either supervised uh, classification. So, we can compare with the ground truth at few locations that is our called a supervised classification or we can do unsupervised classification. So, these are the uh, fundamental steps involved in image processing starting from image uh, restoration or correction. Uh, once we get the image then image enhancements uh, then image transformation and then image classification and then uh, we can utilize this particular image for various applications say for example, this is um, uh, say the, for a particular watershed say the, uh, the data is obtained and then uh, uh, we get a FCC or fast color composition is done and then based upon that uh, we can get the surface features of that particular watershed like um, the drainage pattern or the river location or the or the uh, land use land cover uh, like that. Nowadays various softwares are available uh, and that softwares like Airdas can be used for uh, this image processing and analysis. So, since uh, our uh, aim in this lecture is not to go into de more details about the remote sensing, but we are mainly looking within the perspective of applications to uh, watershed management. So, that way now let us look into what are the important advantages of uh, remote sensing. So, here some of the few advantages I have listed here. So, here first one is uh, we can have a synoptic view. So, like that when a uh, satellite is passing that specified area wherever the scanning is taking place that if that particular watershed is there. So, we get a total view of that particular area. So, we get a synoptic view and then a temporal. Uh, so, that means when the satellite is again, again coming back after few days say especially uh, various uh, plants for agriculture or the flooding problems. So, this kinds of temporal uh, uh, say variations we can easily obtain for that uh, using the, the, that, uh, the particular satellite data. So, that is the another advantage. And then of course, this um, remote sensing is multiple multidisciplinary applications. So, various applications are there in hydrology uh, like um, uh, land related applications, ocean related applications, climate prediction uh, or weather predictions or atmosphere related applications. So, number of applications are there which we will be uh, discussing in the uh, coming slide. So, now within the perspective of remote sensing uh, data, so uh, some few terms like uh, spatial resolution, spectra resolution, temporal resolutions and radiometric resolutions. So, these terms are important. So, let us look into the definitions of these terms. So, spatial resolution means a measure of uh, smallest uh, angular or linear separation between two objects that can be uh, resolved by the sensor. So, that way uh, we can uh, 
uh, consider the spatial resolution which we consider using the uh, specific uh, uh, satellite which we use for remote sensing. And then spectral resolution means the number and dimension of uh, specific uh, wavelength uh, intervals in the electromagnetic spectrum to which a sensor is uh, sensitive. So, that is so called spectral resolution. And then temporal resolution means it refers to how often a sensor records imagery of a particular area. So, the area which we are covering that particular area say after few, few hours or few days or few weeks, weeks uh, how the, uh, the we are getting the data. So, that is so called a temporal uh, resolution. And the last one is radiometric resolution which shows the sensitivity of a detector uh, to differences in signal strength. So, what is the uh, signal strength which is uh, getting back? So, accordingly the, the uh, data resolution will be varying. So, that way uh, when we deal with the, the uh, remote sensing data, we have to see the spatial resolution, spectral resolution, uh, temporal resolution and the uh, radiometric uh, resolution. Since we are now discussing only some uh, 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 preliminary aspects of remote sensing, so uh, anyway let us look into what are the available satellites, some of the important satellites um, uh, internationally available and then also some of the satellites available, remote sensing satellites available in India. Let us have a brief look into this. So, here this data are given here. Uh, so, may one of the major sets of satellites which we use for remote sensing is called the Landsat uh, satellite. Uh, so, a series of satellites put into orbit around the earth to collect environmental data about the earth surface uh, are called as Landsat uh, satellites. Uh, so, this is specifically for remote sensing. So, it can be for land related, ocean related or um, uh, weather related satellites are there. So, various Landsat uh, have uh, um, had uh, so multispectral scanners uh, MSS, then return beam video con RBV scanners and uh, thematic uh, mapper. Uh, uh, scanners. So, this uh, actually uh, various countries like US uh, and other countries came together and uh, that is the uh, uh, system of a series of satellites uh, available for remote sensing. So, that uh, uh, series are called uh, Landsat uh, satellites. So, each type has its own spectral uh, range and spatial resolution as far as Landsat is concerned. So, three important methods of information extraction and in interpretation uh, using Landsat uh, data is say like a photo interpretation, spectral analysis, uh, data uh, integration uh, like that. So, Landsat is a series of satellites are uh, very commonly used for remote sensing. And then uh, say depending upon the purpose whether we are looking to uh, topography or the related to uh, climate related parameter or vegetation. So, then accordingly also uh, specific satellites are available. So, say if you are looking for a topography uh, then uh, 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 the satellites called a LIDAR. Uh, so, which is uh, airborne laser scanning uh, based satellites. So, uh, for uh, say high, high resolution data uh, we can use LIDAR data. So, highly accurate say even up to the level of 1 meter. Uh, so, we can get uh, 1 meter detail elevation models using this data, but uh, the cost will be high and uh, special uh, uh, softwares uh, and expertise needed to process um, uh, such uh, data. So, uh, this is actually we can use say for example, uh, say to get to the entire uh, say for sp specified area how the, uh, the topographic features changes even into uh, up to 1 meter resolution. So, maybe uh, say uh, defense purpose that kind of data can be used. And then another series so called shuttle radar topographic uh, uh, mission, so called SRTM uh, uh, related satellites and data. So, here uh, 100 meter detail elevation model with almost global coverage. So, here uh, under SRTM uh, the uh, which is uh, uh, say uh, the data in uh, uh, provided by uh, NASA in collaboration with other countries um, uh, is called SRTM data and uh, the, the it is available in the internet um, uh, which is supplied by NASA and uh, here the the uh, the interval is uh, uh, the it is very coarse data of 100 meter resolution. Uh, so, this is actually free data. So, for um, uh, say hydrological purpose or watershed management purpose, this data even we can utilize, but the, the resolution is very coarse, but uh, still uh, in many of the applications this SRTM data uh, can be used. 
and another series of satellites uh, called ERS uh, 1 by 2 tandem uh, infra inferometry. So, here it is uh, um, uh, somewhat higher resolution 30 to 100 meter uh, digital elevation model can be obtained from this. So, data from years 1995 to 98 available for most parts of the world. Accuracy vary depending on land cover and topography and uh, reasonable accuracy say even uh, say uh, less than 10 meter can be obtained for non vegetated or flat terrain and uh, data cost uh, moderate. So, here the cost is less and the special software and expertise are needed to process uh, this data from the ERS uh, satellite data. Then another one say related to vegetation uh, say if we are dealing with uh, the land use land cover and uh, uh, related data uh, we can uh, further use the lidar airborne laser scanning. So, the here actually this is a new series of uh, satellite data which is uh, having high resolution uh, with um, uh, say even up to uh, 1 meter resolution we can have the data and uh, uh, some of the satellites already are giving started to give data and further uh, say agencies like NASA and European Space Agency uh, and the Japanese space agencies including uh, Indian space agencies are also now in the process of having further satellites in this uh, lidar uh, related uh, satellites they are putting and then getting the data. So, here full waveform satellites lidars for vegetation mapping have been uh, proposed. So, the high quality data we can obtain even 1 meter resolution. Uh, uh, but uh, this data will be expensive and um, for large areas it is uh, difficult to get for larger watershed or larger river basins, uh, but for small areas uh, we can uh, get the data and process. Then another uh, satellite uh, or series of satellite is um, uh, SAR data. So, synth uh, synthetic aperture radars or SAR system uh, SAR in, uh, uh, interferometry. So, here uh, broad vegetation categories can be distinguished uh, and this is um, uh, not suited for local scale I mean less than 100 meter and uh, data cost moderate and uh, specialized software and uh, uh, high level of expertise is required to uh, process this data. So, that way uh, various system is available uh, to uh, say for specified uh, problems or specified uh, uh, say cases uh, we can get a specified satellite data and then process it and then utilize for that particular applications. So, now let us look into the Indian remote sensing satellites. So, here I have listed some of the important series of satellites put by Indian uh, space research organization ISRO. So, the beginning is in 1988 with um, Indian remote sensing satellite 1A, then 1B has been uh, put uh, in space and that there the resolution was up to 72 or 36 meter uh, with the 4 bands and then uh, 1994 IRS P2 has been put and then IRS uh, 1C in 1995 and then IRS P3 in 1996, then IRS 1D in 1997 uh, which is even uh, have a high resolution like a 5.8 meter, then IRS P4, then uh, resource uh, sat uh, say uh, which is given 23 meter uh, resolution uh, uh, say in 2004. Then the latest development is so called Carto sat, so where even uh, some uh, satellites proposed satellites may give uh, the resolution of 1 meter uh, and for larger uh, applications related to either hydrology or um, uh, watershed management or, uh, or ocean studies or atmosphere studies uh, this series of satellites can be used. So, this shows some of the important satellites available uh, from uh, India uh, provided by Indian Space Research Organization. So, this is about the available satellites uh, say internationally or say from India. So, now let us look into what are the important applications as far as remote sensing is concerned. So, uh, as I mentioned uh, earlier, so we, our, we here in this lecture we are mainly concentrating related to water related applications. So, like a surface water, ground water and then uh, water watershed related applications. So, mainly we are looking to the application sites. So, here in this slide uh, remote sensing applications for surface water the various applications have been listed here. As far as the remote sensing is concerned for uh, say pure water reflects radiation in the visible bands of the electromagnetic spectrum and absorbs uh, almost all, all of it in, in the near and uh, middle infrared bands. 
So, in the infrared uh, water appears dark and is uh, easily uh, distinguishable from uh, other land features. So, that way uh, we, we remote sensing data easily uh, identifies uh, the, the pure water bodies like uh, lakes or rivers or the, the uh, ponds uh, to that level. And then the spectral response of water may vary with the presence of suspended sediments which increase the amount of uh, radiation reflected. So, if any uh, sedimentation is there or the sediment problem is there that also in a different uh, way to be reflecting. Then uh, surface runoff modeling of a watershed with uh, land use uh, from remote sensing we can use uh, in hydrologic modeling uh, which we will be discussing uh, in later lectures also. Uh, so, like um, we can obtain the land use land cover for the particular area uh, uh, and then that uh, from that we can obtain the, uh, the uh, reference coefficient like Manning's reference coefficient that can be directly used in the uh, watershed uh, based modeling. Then a type of land use land cover significantly affects the runoff characteristics of watershed. So, that way this data land use land cover for a watershed or a river basin we can directly utilize. The acquisition of land cover information is of significant value uh, to water resource planners. Uh, so, uh, that way uh, we can utilize the remote sensing in an effective way for uh, uh, say wa watershed based uh, or um, uh, water resource uh, based uh, planning and management. Then uh, the, the in surface water resource development and management remote sensing data provides catchment characterization, uh, better modeling surface uh, water resource uh, like a rainfall uh, to runoff. So, uh, we need to identify for the given rainfall how much will be the runoff. So, that we can uh, say uh, either distributed models or uh, say uh, lambda models we can utilize uh, this uh, remote sensing data uh, in various ways um, uh, uh, say for the uh, hydraulic modeling to identify how much will be the runoff for the given uh, rainfall condition. Then remote sensing data collects. Uh, so, whatever remote sensing data, uh, whatever that we collects multi spectral, multi resolution and multi temporal data and turns them into information like land use land cover data sets. So, which we can uh, directly utilize. And then as far as surface water applications concerned, we can identify uh, the snow melt uh, uh, runoff. Say if a particular area, if snowfall, how much is the snowfall is taken place and how is the snow is melting. So, repeat in a repeated way, uh, uh, temporal variation we can uh, obtain and that gives a lot of information as far as uh, snow melt, uh, snowfall, snow melt and uh, runoff is concerned. And then uh, for surface water we can uh, uh, identify mapping of uh, monitoring of surface water bodies. So, like um, uh, if a um, uh, reservoir is there how much area is flooded or if any flooding problem is there say how the flooding is increasing or decreasing. Uh, then uh, uh, we can also on river basin scale or uh, uh, la for large areas we can assess how the water logging is taking place in that area. Then water temperature and other qualities uh, of water we can identify even water pollution uh, or sedimentation uh, or even uh, say related to ocean oil spillage in ocean. So, all those things we can identify using the remote sensing techniques. Then detection of depth of shallow water and bed load also nowadays with the modern remote sensing techniques we can obtain say how much is the bed load taking place in a particular river and then the depth of shallow water. And then another area is say a particular river whether particular river or lake or a uh, pond is polluted uh, that also uh, with uh, by using uh, multi multi resolution or multi uh, temporal data or multi spectral data uh, we can easily uh, identify. So, like that uh, say for surface water related uh, remote sensing have, have number of uh, applications uh, as I already uh, shown in the, uh, the in the previous slide. So, now uh, let us look what are the important applications related to groundwater. So, groundwater is you can see that actually it is one of the uh, uh, very complex problem as far as hydrology is concerned since uh, most of the groundwater um, uh, details uh, say we can obtain through mainly modeling since uh, data collection through bore, bore wells or bore holes are a very very difficult process. So, with the limited uh, uh, field data we have to uh, say go for uh, computer modeling and then 
uh, we get uh, uh, say uh, uh, the various uh, aspects of groundwater variation, groundwater flow and transport uh, uh, say by running the models. So, these models generally require huge data. So, that data can be uh, given by uh, remote sensing. So, groundwater ne uh, model needs uh, spatial and temporal distributions of input uh, and calibration data. So, that we can obtain from the remote sensing. So, patterns from remote sensing can be translated into a deterministic distribution of input data on a cell by cell basis or in the form of zones. So, it can be for a small area like a grid um, uh, say 50 meter by 50 meter, 100 meter by 100 meter or various zones like zone 1, zone 2 like a particular homogeneous zones we can identify the data. So, some of the raw remote sensing data uh, present um, uh, special patterns like features of process above the uh, surface, then on the surface uh, how the evapotranspiration taking place. Uh, then how the cloud variation is taking place, then shallow subsurface like hydraulic conductivity or soil moisture variation. So, all those things uh, uh, we can identify uh, using the remote sensing. And then uh, in combination uh, with the pattern information uh, with the point information at uh, ground observation stations allow spatial distribution of uh, parameters to be obtained. In a, uh, especially in groundwater modeling if we can identify uh, the, the linear means uh, faults, dikes etcetera. So, that we can easily put into in our models groundwater models and that will be uh, very helpful in, in the, in the uh, overall groundwater uh, model development. So, that way uh, remote sensing uh, have number of applications uh, as far as uh, groundwater is also uh, considered. So, now let us look into further applications of remote sensing various applications I have listed here further applications uh, like we can identify number of climate parameters um, using remote sensing uh, say uh, like a precipitation say using ground based uh, radars or satellites images. So, uh, nowadays instead of uh, uh, getting the rainfall or precipitation for using the, uh, the automatic or non automatic gauges we can use um, uh, radar based system which uh, the which can give a, uh, the various rainfall variation. Uh, in a larger area in a very uh, accurate way. So, that way radar data can be used or uh, satellite images can be used. And then uh, snowfall and melting as I already mentioned uh, that can be obtained through either uh, radars or satellite data. And then uh, glacier conditions, so whether the, the movement of the glaciers or the melting of the glaciers that can be uh, easily identified using the uh, satellites. Then cyclone prediction. So, uh, we can identify the, uh, the cloud movement and then whether any cyclone formation is taking place. So, that can be easily identified by the satellites, uh, remote sensing satellites and that we can easily use uh, say for uh, uh, cyclone prediction. So, how the movement is taking place with uh, hourly movement or uh, daily wise movement. So, that uh, that particular area will be uh, affected by cyclone. So, that way uh, we can easily predict. And then uh, the temperature variation uh, uh, we, we can obtain through modern uh, remote sensing satellites. Uh, then as I mentioned cloud movement or drought prediction. So, uh, say as far as uh, uh, weather predictions or climate parameters we can uh, use remote sensing uh, satellites in a, in a very um, uh, huge way at uh, various uh, for various cases uh, we can utilize. And then uh, some other applications like uh, flood variations if uh, for the particular area due to rainfall or breaking breaching of uh, dam whether that particular say if uh, some flooding situation takes place how the flood is uh, uh, progressing. So, all those variations we can easily obtain uh, from the remote sensing data and then vegetation cover type. Then uh, huge applications are there in forest management. So, uh, say how the, uh, the, the, the at particular time uh, how the, the forest is uh, uh, spreaded and then uh, with respect to time how the variation is taking place after say for example, in winter, summer uh, or say from year to year how the forest uh, variation is taking place. So, that we can easily obtain from uh, remote sensing and then also even we can identify forest to fire. Then we can identify soil moisture using remote sensing either directly or through indirect measurements. Then uh, evapotranspiration assessment can be done. Then of course, another uh, uh, area uh, important area is agricultural management like uh, we can identify other than helping through climate predictions or the uh, 
the rainfall predictions. Um, uh, we can also assess the agricultural conditions and then say the, the, the crop health or the cropping pattern. So, all those things uh, we can uh, use the uh, remote sensing. Then uh, say uh, the drought management like desertification, then sand uh, um, uh, dunes or dust storm. So, all those things uh, we can uh, identify using the uh, remote sensing. And then uh, another area where uh, huge applications are there is ocean uh, or um, uh, coastal regions. So, um, if there is a say for example, if there is a oil spillage, how say how much area is affected and uh, where the uh, this uh, plume is moving. So, that we can easily identify and within lot of applications related to uh, fishing or uh, related to various uh, behavior uh, uh, say uh, that can takes place in the ocean. So, these are all we can obtain through uh, say remote sensing and then another area is environmental impact assessment. So, there uh, say if um, a particular system is built say how the and the the uh, the river basin or the watershed is behaving so that also we can identify uh, uh, say in the in the environment impact assessment uh, using the uh, remote sensing so now uh, say whatever we discussed is the remote sensing application for surface water uh, ground water or ocean applications or further applications so now let us come back to uh, the watershed management uh, is concerned so how re remote sensing can be effectively utilized uh, either in the development of watershed uh, uh, management plans or the implementations or the uh, evaluations so here in this slide uh, i have listed various applications First one is uh, watershed delineation. So, we have already discussed about the watershed delineation in one of the previous lecture. Uh, so, um, uh, we can obtain the remote sensing data uh, and then we can process uh, and with the help of of course, the topo sheet and other uh, maps, we can uh, delineate the watershed um, uh, either uh, in software like uh, ARP view or other uh, GIS softwares. Then some of the other important areas are resource mapping, identification of erosion prone areas, modeling sediment yield, conservation prioritization, conservation planning, monitoring watershed for environmental impact assessment. So, all these uh, uh, say points we will discuss uh, in detail in the next slides. So, first one is uh, resource mapping using the remote sensing. So, uh, as I already mentioned in the, in the earlier lectures, so uh, we are uh, dealing with a larger area as far as a watershed or river basin is concerned. So, uh, to um, uh, get a synoptic view for that particular area in a total view, if we can get uh, like land use, land cover or uh, soil related issues or the, uh, the vegetation, then that will be uh, very useful uh, for um, watershed uh, development management plans. So, that way uh, using remote sensing, uh, the remote sensing enables easy accurate time and cost effective mapping uh, as far as the watershed is concerned. And uh, remote sensing updates several resources uh, information such as like a stream network map uh, within the watershed, uh, surface water map, land use map, vegetation map, uh, physiographic soil map, uh, then uh, erosion prone area map, snow cover map, uh, soil moisture map, then uh, land form uh, map, uh, ground water prospect map. So, like that um, uh, say based upon the remote sensing data, uh, uh, say once we uh, put this uh, after processing uh, in software like um, Erdas and then uh, putting to appropriate GIS packages uh, and manipulating uh, with respect to the various input data. Uh, we can generate a series of maps like uh, land use map, land cover map, uh, vegetation map, then uh, erosion prone map, uh, snow cover map, uh, uh, soil moisture map uh, like that. So, various maps uh, resource maps can be generated using the remote sensing. So, that way remote sensing um, uh, is very important in, uh, in watershed management uh, development plans. And then second application is identification of erosion prone area. So, as we discussed earlier, uh, discussed earlier so uh, the uh, uh, soil erosion is a major problem and then related sedimentation issues. So, um, remote sensing as it gives a synoptic view uh, in a, on a temporal basis, I mean in a repetitive basis. So, that way uh, we can, uh, if we analyze appropriately this uh, remote sensing images, uh, we can get a lot of data uh, to identify uh, what the, the erosion prone areas. 
So, some of the important aspects uh, are listed here in this slide. So, remote sensing facilitates identification of existing or potential erosion uh, prone areas. Uh, remote sensing help in planning reclamation or preventive uh, measures. So, based on uh, satellite image various erosion uh, intensity classes can be assigned. Uh, say like nil to slight or slight slight to moderate moderate or moderate to severe uh, or severe can be delineated and mapped so that way uh, we can uh, uh, say even uh, work for prediction using the uh, remote sensing uh, images then wasteland information are also possible using high resolution multi spectral and multi uh, temporal uh, satellite images so that way uh, we can use the remote sensing data then uh, another application is uh, related to watershed is modeling sediment yield. So, due to the soil erosion sedimentation takes place in reservoirs uh, that is a major problem uh, in watershed development plants or river basin development plants. So, generally we, we use empirical models or um, numerical models uh, for um, uh, uh, to identify how much is the sediment yield for particular area or particular uh, uh, reservoir. So, uh, for that purpose we need a lot of data. So, this data can be uh, given by the remote sensing. Uh, so, that way the empirical models are used to estimate empirical or numerical models are used to estimate the sediment yield. So, average annual soil loss and uh, conservation planning or uh, uh, for soil uh, or erosion control in agricultural lands, uh, construction sites, reclaimed mines or forest management. Uh, since it uh, requires small areas, low cost, short project span and uh, there is little risk of failure. So, these models require input parameters in terms of spatial information on land use, uh, vegetation cover, uh, soil, rain density, runoff uh, and rain, uh, rainfall intensity which are time consuming and costly uh, by conventional surveys. So, this data uh, we can uh, uh, get from the remote sensing satellites. So, this data provide convenient tool to derive this information. So, that way uh, we can utilize the remote sensing uh, data to model uh, sediment deal. Then another area is conservation prioritization watershed. So, identification of erosion prone areas to uh, uh, areas to evolve appropriate conservation management strategies. So, uh, hence maximum benefit can be derived out of any such uh, money, uh, money or time uh, effort making schemes. So, we can prioritize which one is the first priorities and second one like that. So, we can uh, uh, make a uh, say a priority and then we can classify. So, priority classification can be obtained uh, using the remote sensing. So, priority classification means arrangement of different units of a watershed uh, in decreasing order of their sediment yield say for example, if we consider sediment yield, sediment yield pot potentials arrived through sediment yield modeling and then uh, provide uh, threshold values uh, through frequent uh, frequency distribution of such data uh, into the priority classes. This can be either for sediment deal or water resource assessment or water resource uh, planning for the particular watershed. So, that way uh, we can have uh, the applications of remote sensing for conservation prioritization in watershed. So, then uh, another application is conservation planning in watershed. So, uh, here one of the key uh, sectors for conservation planning in watershed is rainwater harvesting. So, uh, rainwater harvesting can be uh, used to improve the, uh, the water availability in the area or also can be used to reduce the uh, uh, soil erosion problems. So, rainwater harvesting uh, uh, say we need optimal site selection for constructing check dams and storage uh, of water. So, uh, site investigation need uh, following resource information. So, these informations uh, we can obtain through remote sensing. So, like drainage area and stream network, physiography and uh, relief land use, uh, vegetation and soil, uh, then uh, uh, rainfall intensity duration uh, recurrence interval, then uh, water utilization potential, uh, then socio-economical aspects, then watershed management practices already in the, in the area. So, these resources information can be extracted using the remote sensing data and that can be directly utilized. So, that way uh, remote sensing data can be used for uh, conservation planning uh, as far as a watershed is concerned. Then another important application is monitoring watersheds for environmental impact assessment. So, as I mentioned uh, uh, if we implement any scheme in a particular watershed, so uh, what will be the effects all those things can be studied uh, using the 
remote sensing. So, water resource development projects um, are essential for agricultural industrialization and economic growth of a region. Uh, large scale water resource projects may in induce uh, adverse impact on environment. So, a sound uh, approach for environment impact assessment is required uh, to assist engineers and decision makers. So, to choose uh, proper alternative source to in decrease environment impact due to water resource development, uh, we can uh, use uh, the remote sensing. So, we need to monitor what will be happening if a particular scheme is implemented, if a reservoir is uh, there. So, uh, with respect to the effect of reservoir, what will be happening? So, this data we can uh, repetitively collect uh, for that area and then we can process it and use. So, that way remote sensing will be re very useful uh, in the EIA. So, monitoring is essential to know adverse impact of water resource development projects and beneficial impact of subsequent watershed management programs. So, this is possible by time series analysis of satellite data of the watershed over a period. So, say monsoon time what will happen happening and in uh, summer time what will be happening and then year by year uh, say with respect to that particular project a dam project. Uh, how the system is uh, behaving. So, that we can study and then we can analyze. So, that way remote sensing is very useful for environment impact assessment. So, now uh, before closing today lecture, let, uh, let us look into one case study where remote sensing is extensively used. Uh, so, this case study is taken from uh, Patmaja, Upla uh, and others uh, paper in environmental uh, informatics archive archive volume number 2 2004 page number 885 to 892. So, this is remote sensing applications for management of water and land in Pragasam districts of Andhra Pradesh, India. Some of the features of this area is listed here. So, the uh, Rakerla Mandal of Pragasam district falls under semi-arid zone in peninsular India. The total area is about 670.8 square kilometer. Identified as chronically drought affected area in the state with the agroecological situation and characterized by single crop system due to predominantly rainfall cultivation with low and erratic rainfall. Climate is dry, uh, tropical, uh, semi arid type with hot summer during March to May, followed by southwest monsoon from June to uh, September. So, here uh, uh, say the detailed uh, steps uh, as far as remote sensing analysis and applications uh, I have listed here. So, it begins the, the process begins with um, uh, accuracy uh, the, the accurate we, we say the, we obtain the data from the satellites. So, we begin um, begins with um, acquiring the satellite image and the topo sheet of the required study area. So, this is as reported by the others in the reference. So, the following steps are adopted for the watershed management of this particular area using remote sensing and GIS techniques. So, step 1 preparation of drainage map using survey of India topo sheets and satellite uh, imagery to determine the drainage pattern and for calculating various drainage characteristics like the, uh, the say drainage density, basin slope etcetera. Then step number 2 preparation of land use land cover map uh, using survey of India topo sheets and satellite imagery to know the various uses of the land in that particular area. So, this also uh, we can uh, through this we can obtain the uh, crop uh, the area or the, the watershed area etcetera for that particular region as used by the, uh, the others. Then step number 3 uh, preparing uh, uh, preparation of hydro geomorphology map using uh, survey of India topo sheets and satellite imagery which is used for finding the groundwater prospects and uh, suggest water harvesting structures. So, this is the particular area as given by the others uh, in this uh, paper. So, this shows the land use land cover uh, details. So, here um, uh, the say my aim of presenting this case studies the various steps involved in this such studies and then how effectively remote sensing is used. So, that is the question uh, which I, uh, I am trying to answer here. So, in step number uh, uh, 3 the hydro geomorphological maps are generated and land use land cover maps are generated. And then step number 4 preparation of slope map using survey of India topo sheets and the, the remote sensing data. Then step number 5 a GIS detail system uh, in the arc, uh, arc info is used for input and manipulation and creation of error free uh, digital database for all natural resources within the area. So, that is the step number 5 as reported by the others. And then uh, step number uh, 6 uh, depending on the, the combination of above mentioned uh, resources themes uh, action plans for land and water resource and treatment plans for 
catchment area are generated uh, for the development of the uh, watershed. So, uh, here uh, based upon this various steps mentioned here. So, the main purpose is to come up with plans for rainwater harvesting and then other water related resource developments. So, depending upon the soil climate uh, in step number 7 local practices um, and keeping in view of the long term market prospects cropping patterns are determined based on uh, uh, crop water requirement in view of the water availability. So, uh, the plants using the G remote sensing and GIS the plants were made where the particular check dam should be constructed, where should be various rainwater harvesting measures should be adopted and uh, these uh, locations were identified to generate watershed development plans and then uh, say uh, it has been identified the cropping patterns, existing cropping patterns and then how the uh, cropping pattern can be improved um, with respect to soil, uh, climate and then local practices. So, all the above steps are aimed for optimum development of land and water resource to meet the basic minimum needs of people thereby improving their socio-economic conditions. So, that way the authors did this study uh, as mentioned in these 7 steps and the information generated from uh, such studies can be used uh, by decision makers for sustainable development plans. So, uh, for particular watershed, so as uh, put in this uh, using these steps using the remote sensing data and uh, within the GIS framework. So, we can uh, propose watershed development plans uh, say and then uh, say which area should be say go going for specified crops and then uh, so that uh, overall uh, socio economical impacts will be there for the concentrated area. So, that way the remote sensing uh, is very uh, the remote sensing data is very effectively used uh, for this particular area by the uh, others. Before finishing this lecture, so remote sensing applications, so some concluding remarks. So, as I already mentioned in this lecture, remote sensing data could be assessed without restrictions in many cases. So, we can uh, use for various purposes and as I mentioned already, uh, it gives a synoptic view and uh, in the temporal variations with respect to repetitive where with respect to time and the advantage of remote sensing uh, we can effectively utilize uh, for the development of various watershed development plans. Uh, and uh, remote sensing data is not biased and is available shortly uh, after satellite overpass in that area. So, that are some of the further advantages. So, special purpose remote sensing products that can directly uh, support various uh, watershed management projects like hydrology, uh, water accounting, disaster management, irrigation management, wetland management, watershed management and uh, land degradations are possible using the remote sensing. So, that way we can effectively uh, utilize the remote sensing. So, some of the important references used uh, for today's lectures uh, are listed here. So, the case study is taken by uh, from this paper by Padmanja, Pulla, Shiva Shankar, Asadi, Pavani and uh, Anji Reddy uh, published in uh, Environmental Informatic Archives. And uh, before closing few questions, total question critically study various remote sensing satellite uh, available example Landsat, IRS, etc. and its capabilities, resolution of images, etc. So, these details we can get from internet. Evaluate the capabilities of each satellite for watershed management plans. Then explore how effectively the remote sensing data can be used for the development of watershed management plans. Then uh, some self evaluation questions, uh, uh, discuss the basics of remote sensing, how the remote sensing data is obtained. What are the important features of remote sensing? What are the advantages of remote sensing for various problems? Describe how the uh, the describe uh, about the Indian satellites program available for remote sensing. What are the important applications of remote sensing for groundwater related problems? Describe the various applications of remote sensing for uh, watershed management or wat uh, watershed development problems. So, few assignment questions discuss the evolution uh, in remote sensing for the last few decades. Explain the uh, range of electromagnetic spectrum used for remote sensing, discuss the various steps in remote sensing and image processing, discuss the details about the important satellites available for remote sensing in various countries, what are the important applications of remote sensing for surface water related problems, what are the important applications of remote sensing uh, related to atmospheric or climate related studies. So, finally, uh, the one unsolved problem say from Aster as given in this website or SRTM given in this website or Bhuvan or IRS data as given in this website. Obtain the remote sensing image of your watershed area based upon you can get based upon the latitude longitude 
delete the watershed area based on topo sheet and images uh, and other available data generate detailed elevation model land use land cover map slope map soil map etc for your area and then explore how effectively this remote sensing data can be used for like hydrologic modeling or watershed uh, development plans so today what we discussed is how effectively remote sensing can be used for uh, watershed management plans uh, so as we have already seen number of applications are there related to watershed so anyway uh, say uh, due to lack of time since our uh, uh, say related to remote sensing um, we, uh, we, i cannot give much time since only one lecture has been planned so, uh, so further some applications uh, we will be discussing in the in the coming lectures related to further remote sensing applications when we discuss the uh, the decision support system or the uh, numerical model thank you